Good morning. So over the last six weeks, we've been looking at the basic premise of Christianity as good news. Our goal has been to awaken or reawaken our appreciation for the incredibly good news we discover in the Gospels. Some premises, though. The good news is news about God in the person of Jesus Christ having broken into human history. This is multifaceted and really changed everything for everyone, good and bad alike. And this good news unfolds over time. And we exist somewhere in that timeline. Today we stand at the foot of the cross and Luke tells us Jesus is being mocked and ridiculed by the powers that be and even one of the two criminals who hung along with him. The other criminal, however, rebuked him saying in reply, have you no fear of God for you are subject to the same condemnation and indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. You know, from tradition, this man was known as St. Dismas. That St. Dismas, the one who repented, the one, the good thief, along with Jesus on the cross, the patron saint of prison ministry that Deacon Don is so involved in, that this guy recognizes two very important truths. First, he recognizes who Jesus is, the Son of God, and he recognizes his own sinfulness and need for Jesus. And these two truths come together and he turns to Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Every breath Jesus uttered from the cross was utterly painful. But Jesus not only answers the good thief, he promises him paradise. All that the good thief had to do was ask Jesus to remember him. It's the same promise extended to every single person, you and I included. Jesus shows through the cross and by his resurrection that the power behind the cosmos is not brute force, but love. There is a God that loves you so much that he sent his son into the world to die for you. This is a love so powerful that it can raise Jesus from the dead and overcome your greatest mistakes and failures. A love so powerful that even if you have spent your life as a criminal or a thief, or just being you instead of the person God created, that same you can be redeemed. A love so deep and so wide and so great that he lays down his life for us. A love so great that even when it was forced and faced with rejection and mockery, it overcomes it more with love. Why would anyone reject the gospel? At its heart, it says that even though you are flawed, you are loved beyond your imagination. So much so that God even wants to partner with you to help others experience this love. Confess that I feel Ad inadequate trying to convey this good news because it is so good, so astounding, 
I can only scratch the surface. However, I also realize the gospel is so profound that it cannot be communicated by just a single person. It requires a community of people who carry the good news in their lives and out to the world. As a church, we steward the most incredible message. We don't have to, we get to. We get to proclaim the message to the world. It's an incredible privilege and honor that God places such an important message in our hands and asks us to share it with the world. The church, which is all of us, is the hope of the world because it's through us that God chooses to communicate the good news. It's a message and a mission that deserves all of our lives. But especially on this stewardship weekend, we ask that you invest financially so that we continue to bring the good news of God's love to our community of Jupiter and further afield. So the commitment we ask, one is to make giving a priority in your budget by giving automatically or electronically. We make automatic what is most important for us because we make it a priority in our lives. And second is to pick a percentage of your income to give away. The scriptures encourage us to give a tithe or a 10% to our place of worship as an act of worship. But whatever you decide to give, pick a percentage of your income, even if it's 1%. Start with a percentage. And third, progress in your giving. Since giving moves our hearts in God's direction, we want to progress or grow in our giving so that more and more of our hearts are going in God's direction. Our church grows when the giving and generosity of our members grows. So try and make some progress. In doing this, you will help us to continue to spread the good news to the next generation in our children's ministry and youth programs. We can invest in our small groups and caring for our members. It helps us to build our online campus and reach more people in our community. The good news is that this world has been created by God who does not need us, but created us out of his goodness and kindness. The good news is that when we turn our back on him, God doesn't turn his back on us. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave us his only beloved son. The good news is that all is not well, but it will be one day when Christ the King rules over people's hearts. The good news for us is that God has called us to share this gospel with the world. Our goal is not simply to believe the good news, but to be a good news people.